What up my ninjas? I'm Dalma Fokhari. Welcome to my very first promo discussion. We'll talk about when worlds collide. It's the fifth episode of season five of Ninja Turtles. It should air on June 18th, so that's Father's Day coming up real soon here. So happy early Father's Day to all of you. Before we really dive into when worlds collide, let's get a few housekeeping things out of the way. First off, since this is the first episode of this Promo Talks series, I'd like to know if there's anything you want me to expand on or improve. Just comment away down below. I really would love to cater to you guys and make sure you enjoy these videos. Secondly, I'm sticking to a spoiler-free policy, which means I did not actually check out any fan accounts, forums, or blogs. I only checked out Nickelodeon official material and updates on top of some Wikipedia pages. So if you want to check those out, please do so you know what I'm talking about in this video. Check them out. The links are in the description below. That being said, if you know of reviewers and bloggers who stick to that same spoiler free uh, promo discussion, please let me know who they are in the comments below. They deserve a shout out and I love spreading that TMNT love. Alright, let's get into this. When Worlds Collide, as the title suggests, pits several different opponents from different worlds against one another. We've got first and foremost, Neutralizer. He is back and incredibly powerful. As Donnie says in the promo, he's got this electricity-based weaponry, and I don't even know what his end game here is, but all in all, bad news for the turtles. And if that wasn't, you know, tricky enough, he's apparently got an unexpected ally, according to Team NTpedia. The promos don't provide any real clue as to who that is, but I have my own long shot prediction. <laughs> Drum roll, please. I am guessing that the one and only Michelangelo will help Neutralizer in his schemes. I have a couple of reasons for this. First off, his uncharacteristically gleeful expression at destroying something. Now don't get me wrong, yes, Mikey, when overly excited, can certainly trash a farmhouse. He's also played several pranks on his brothers. But it's one thing to release some stress by, you know, Dr. Frankenstein. It's another to happily hurt somebody. Those are two different stories. Secondly, we see Mikey running out of a vortex of some kind to attack an enemy, assumably Neutralizer. Usually when Mikey gets a special attack like this or a special moment, it's for poetic justice. So I'm thinking Mikey has a personal vendetta against Neutralizer, maybe even similar to Don and Don Vizioso. One more thing about Neutralizer. We know he's wrecking havoc, but apparently he's also in Dimension X for a time. It looks like he's harming, I should say, some Utrams, just based on the way they're talking. We don't have any convoluted English in there. And on top of that, the reason why I think the Utram will be involved is because this is a 2003 reference. In the 2003 show, there are three episodes titled worlds collide so you can see the distinction the very clear comparison between this and when worlds collide in both episodes i mean there are different obviously different worlds and uh characters coming against one another but agent bishop appears in uh, the 2003 show but i think it stands to reason that he will make an appearance as well now moving on from neutralizer let's talk about some allies here because the turtles could use some Sal Commander and Mona Lisa are back. Mona Lisa looks like the both of them are calling on the turtles for help to take Neutralizer down, but I want to focus on Mona Lisa specifically. I'm worried that she and Raph might have some potential romance problems on the horizon. I say that because of her melancholy tone when she says, much has transpired in our time apart, something along those lines. It has me even expecting that she has moved on to another lover, worst case scenario. That totally breaks my heart because not only do I ship Mona Yell so hard, like honestly, they, I want them to live into their old age 
and somehow die together. Like, they're, they're that couple in battle who are badass, but they get struck down together at the same time somehow. I, I don't want them to get hurt, but I want them to live happily ever after, basically. And secondly, on the topic of heartbreak, hasn't Raphael dealt with enough? You know, lost his father, him and his family took down the Schroeder for the second time in a row. I don't want them to now deal with a heartbroken wrath. Now, all that being said, I just want to put this into the universe. Wouldn't it be fun, or at least personally rewarding, to see the Mighty Mute Animals again? And I say that because Sla we know that Slash and Neutralizer have a little bit of a history together as at least partners, if not, you know, partners in crime. How satisfying would it be for Slash to come back and help defeat Neutralizer? This would be a great chance for him to redeem himself all over again with his own team to boot. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. If you don't agree, that is totally okay. Now, as I wrap up this promo discussion, I have a question of the day for you. Of course I do. I want to know, what do you, were you more excited for Lone Rat and Cubs to air on Father's Day? And I ask that because for the longest time, it seemed like that was the episode to go. I'm not complaining about When Worlds Collide though. It is jam-packed and intense, and I think a worthwhile end to a hiatus. But maybe you think differently. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Now we'll talk soon, and we will talk long for When Worlds Collide, the review. Until then, my ninjas.